The movie starts with calm scenes in a rural part of Texas in the year 1980. A sheriff talks about the changes he has seen since becoming a police officer. The focus then shifts to a young deputy escorting a handcuffed man to his police car. Inside the car, he contacts a colleague about the strange weapon the man had. As they drive away, back at the station, the deputy uses the phone to inform another colleague about the arrest. Suddenly, the mysterious man attacks him from behind, choking him to death. After cleaning his hands of blood, the man leaves the sheriff's office. In the next scene, a car is being followed until it stops for a police car behind it. The mysterious man exits the police vehicle and approaches the ordinary driver who questions why he was pulled over. Without answering, the mysterious man, holding the peculiar weapon mentioned earlier, instructs the driver to step out of the car and remain still before killing him. The scene then shifts to a man named Lelan Moss in the desert. He is a skilled hunter out to feed his family, using a scope to aim at a deer. He manages to hit a buck with his rifle, but it's not a fatal shot, and the deer escapes. Moss tracks the wounded animal through the desert and stumbles upon a troubling sight, a botched drug deal. Approaching cautiously with his gun ready, he realizes the dangerous situation unfolding before him. He unlocks one of the car doors and discovers a dying man in the driver's seat who pleads for water. Instead of offering water, he takes the man's firearm, mentioning there is no water available. After inspecting the trunk and finding a large amount of drugs worth millions ready for distribution, he goes back to the man to inquire about any surviving individuals. However, the man continues to request water, so Llewellyn decides to leave. It is evident that Llewellyn is a resourceful individual, and he concludes that whoever survived the situation must have fled and will need to find shade from the scorching desert sun. He eventually spots two trees on a hill and, using his binoculars, notices a motionless man sitting beneath them. Proceeding cautiously with his gun at the ready, he discovers the man is deceased. Llewellyn seizes the man's firearm and inspects a bag nearby filled with money. Taking the cash, he heads back home. Upon his return, he hides the firearm under the trailer and enters the house to find his wife, Carla January. She inquires about his whereabouts during the day, but he brushes off her question, grabbing a beer from the fridge and joining her in bed to watch television. Later that evening, Llewellyn feels remorseful for abandoning the man without providing water, so he returns with a jug of water. Unfortunately, upon his return, he discovers that the man has passed away. As Llewellyn prepares to leave, he notices shadows on the hillside where his truck was parked. Quickly taking cover, he observes unknown individuals, likely members of the cartel, entering their truck and driving down to the scene. Initially attempting to hide behind a car, Llewellyn decides to flee with the unfamiliar vehicle following closely behind and firing shots at him during the pursuit. Fortunately, Llewellyn reaches a river, but he sustains a gunshot wound to the shoulder as he jumps into the gully before swimming for safety. A hunting dog follows closely behind him in the water, but as Llewellyn reaches the opposite shore, he swiftly loads his pistol and shoots the dog just in time to save himself. Meanwhile, we shift to a gas station in a remote location where a mysterious man engages in conversation with the owner. The man's unsettling inquiries unsettle the owner, leading him to conclude that the man's disturbing nature deems him unworthy of living. He opts to flip a coin to decide whether to spare the elderly man and requests the man to make a call. The man correctly predicts the outcome, leading the unpredictable individual to spare his life, advising him to value the coin before departing. In the subsequent scene, Llewellyn tends to his injuries while Carla Jean inquires about the situation. Llewellyn declines to disclose details to her, instead instructing her to pack her belongings and go to her mother's residence in a different county. Reluctantly, she agrees. Later that night, we return to the crime scene where the enigmatic man meets with his superiors. They guide him through the scene, unveiling that he is a hired assassin. They explain the circumstances and provide him with a tracking device. However, it becomes apparent that the mysterious man has a change of heart and decides to exterminate his employers come morning. In the following scene, the county sheriff loads a horse onto a trailer before heading to the site of a burning vehicle. A deputy sheriff awaits his arrival, and Sheriff Bell speculates that the car was stolen by the mysterious man. Spotting Llewellyn's truck, they gaze into the distance and see the shootout location. Examining the trucks, they deliberate on the evidence before Sheriff Bell approaches one of the vehicle's trunks, revealing it to be a failed drug transaction. Meanwhile, we witness the secretive individual rap on the trailer's door before forcefully breaking the lock and entering the residence. He picks up scattered mail and conducts a search, noticing the occupant's hasty departure. Examining a telephone bill, he finds a clue before settling on the couch, gazing at a non-functional TV. 
Subsequently, he ventures into the trailer park office, inquiring about Llewellyn's whereabouts from the receptionist. Despite her refusal due to motel policy, the enigmatic man surprisingly departs. Concurrently, Llewellyn accompanies Carla Jean on a bus as she departs for her mother's residence. She expresses concern for his safety, to which Llewellyn reassures her before bidding her goodbye. Later that day, the sheriff and his colleague arrive at Llewellyn's deserted home, realizing the mysterious man's recent departure. Sheriff Bell settles on the couch, mimicking the mysterious man's earlier action of staring at the blank TV. The scene shifts to Llewellyn in a motel room, attempting to remain inconspicuous. Upon spotting an air vent, he removes the cover, extracts cash from a case, and conceals the case deep within the ventilation duct. After ensuring no one was around, he departs from the motel. Meanwhile, the mysterious man dials the numbers from the telephone bill in an attempt to locate Llewellyn. Llewellyn goes shopping for clothes, tends to his injuries in a restroom, and later that night, feeling uneasy, asks the driver to take him to a different motel. On the contrary, the mysterious man, driven by his twisted nature, impulsively shoots down an innocent bird, showcasing his psychopathic tendencies. The next morning, the sheriff's deputy updates the sheriff at a diner, revealing that the victim was not shot as initially presumed, a fact that the sheriff struggles to accept, unaware that the killer uses a bolt stunner, a device used in cattle slaughter. Simultaneously, Llewellyn visits a firearms store, buys a 12-gauge shotgun and ammunition, then shortens the barrel of the gun. He proceeds to the motel reception, requests another room, studies the motel map, pays for the room adjacent to the one where he hid the money, and begins assembling a tent. Meanwhile, the mysterious man, driving in the vicinity, notices the tracker he planted flashing near the motel. He parks at the motel and uses the tracker to pinpoint the money's location. As Llewellyn remains in his room, setting up the tent poles, unaware of the impending danger and the unfolding events. Llewellyn uncovers the vent and uses the pole he put together to retrieve the satchel, while the enigmatic man quietly explores the motel. He shoots off the lock of Llewellyn's initial room and enters, shooting and killing the cartel members inside who are also searching for the money. Meanwhile, the person in the adjacent room hears the gunshots and quickly takes the satchel. The mysterious man then checks the bathroom, discovers a cartel member hiding in the bathtub, closes the curtains, and ends their life without hesitation. He continues searching the room but finds nothing before noticing the ventilation duct, realizing that Llewellyn has escaped. The scene shifts to an elevator rising in the city, where Carson Wells enters an office. Carson, a veteran of the Vietnam War and a hitman, is hired to track down the mysterious man and return the money to its rightful owners. The individual at the desk is a drug lord who asks if Carson knows Anton Chagar, to which Carson responds that he has worked with him before and describes Anton as a psychopathic killer without any conscience, remorse, or compassion. Carson leaves the office to commence the search. Later that night, Llewellyn arrives at a hotel, checks in, and bribes the clerk to inform him if anyone else arrives at the hotel after him. Unable to sleep, Llewellyn wonders how the cartel managed to track his location, leading him to search the satchel and discover a small tracking device hidden inside a wad of cash. At that moment, he hears a faint noise from downstairs, tries calling the front desk to no avail, and realizes that something is amiss. He grabs the shotgun from his bag and settles on the bed, prepared for action. He switches off the light, alert and waiting. Suddenly, a figure's shadow appears outside his door. Startled, he hesitates, but the shadow swiftly disappears. The room's lights go out, followed by a deafening blast as the door lock is blown off. Llewellyn reacts by firing his shotgun and leaping out of the window, but he is shot in the process. After fleeing around a corner, he inspects his wound before flagging down a passing car. Tragically, the driver is instantly killed by a hail of gunfire unleashed on the vehicle. Llewellyn ducks to evade the bullets, attempting to drive the car blindly but crashes into parked cars due to his obscured vision. He exits the car, seeking cover across the street, and glimpses Anton approaching in a reflection. He patiently awaits the opportune moment to strike. Anton cautiously nears the vehicle, searching for any trace of Llewellyn. Upon noticing a trail of blood on the road, he marks its direction. Taking advantage of the moment, Llewellyn emerges from cover, firing his shotgun at Anton as he advances. Despite firing where he last saw the attacker, Llewellyn cannot spot Anton anywhere. He heads towards the Mexican border crossing, encountering a group of young men. He pays them $500 for one of their coats to conceal his injuries before scouting for a hiding spot. Llewellyn tosses his bag over a fence and into some bushes, then walks into Mexico without any issues at the border. The next morning, 
he finds himself on the street where a mariachi band is performing. He gives them some money, hoping they can assist him in getting medical help. In the meantime, in West Texas, Anton is seen cutting up fabric and cotton balls in a car. He steps out of the vehicle and approaches another car, setting it on fire after soaking fabric in gas and placing it in the gas tank. Inside a pharmacy, the car explodes, creating a diversion that allows Anton to steal medical supplies. Later, Anton is in a motel room, tending to his wounds from the gun battle with Llewellyn, performing first aid on himself. Meanwhile, at the sheriff's office, the sheriff discusses the cartel situation with a colleague, mentioning that he plans to meet with Carla Jean and Odessa to discuss bringing Llewellyn in for questioning. Still in Mexico, Llewellyn wakes up in a hospital to find Carson Wells by his side with flowers. Carson introduces himself and quickly inquires about the money, but Llewellyn admits to spending it all on alcohol and women. Carson is displeased and informs Llewellyn that Anton is on his way to Odessa to kill his wife, urging him to hand over the money for their own well-being. A couple of hours later, Sheriff Bell meets with Carla Jean at a cafe and warns her about the danger her husband is facing. He urges her to let him know if Llewellyn reaches out to her, but she is confident that Llewellyn can take care of himself. Meanwhile, Carson is tracking Llewellyn's movements at the Mexican border, locating the bag in the bushes. After spotting the satchel, Carson returns to his hotel, but as he climbs the stairs, Anton surprises him from behind with a gun, demanding to be taken to his room. They sit across from each other in the room, where Carson tries to bargain for his life by offering the money to Anton. However, Anton is unmoved and Carson realizes he is dealing with someone irrational. Before they can continue their conversation, the telephone rings, disrupting their interaction. In a ruthless and calculated move, Anton swiftly kills Carson, then calmly picks up the phone to speak with Llewellyn, who is calling from the hospital. They discuss the money's whereabouts, but Llewellyn, stubborn and agitated, refuses to listen to reason, escalating to threatening Anton before abruptly ending the call. Back in West Texas, Sheriff Bell and his deputy are at a cafe, discussing the turmoil in their town and trying to comprehend the changing landscape of crime. As criminal activities increase and grow more disturbing, they reflect on the challenging times they are facing. The film then shifts to Llewellyn, who has left the hospital and is re-entering the United States from the Mexican border. When questioned by the border officer about his hospital gown, the officer, upon learning that Llewellyn is a Vietnam veteran, instructs a colleague to assist him in getting into town. Llewellyn then goes into a store to buy some clothes before calling Carla from a bus station, instructing her to meet him at a motel in Albuquerque. He plans to give her the money and help her escape while he deals with Anton. Anton, on the other hand, goes to the office of the man who hired Carson Wells. Without hesitation, he shoots the man with a silenced shotgun before inquiring about his identity to a witness who describes him as an accountant. When asked if he will be killed, Anton cryptically responds, that depends, do you see me? Back with Carla and her mother, they are heading to a motel in a taxi, closely followed by members of the cartel. At a bus station, they encounter a cartel member posing as a helpful stranger, who learns their destination when Carla's mother innocently shares the name of the motel. Inside the bus station, Carla contacts Sheriff Bell to inform him that Llewellyn wants to meet at the Desert Sands Motel in Albuquerque. At the same time, Llewellyn arrives at the motel for the rendezvous with Carla. While waiting, a woman by the pool makes advances towards him, but he politely declines, stating that he is married. They engage in casual conversation until Carla's anticipated arrival. The scene then shifts to Sheriff Bell rushing to the motel in his vehicle, witnessing armed cartel members fleeing the area. He parks, approaches Llewellyn's room, only to find him already killed in a shootout. Later that evening, Carla finally reaches the motel and steps out of the taxi to discover that law enforcement has surrounded the area. Sheriff Bell approaches her, tipping his hat, and Carla realizes that her husband has been killed earlier that day. Sheriff Bell meets with the local sheriff at a diner to discuss the state of their society, the impact of money and drugs on their communities. They then leave the diner to head home and talk about Anton Schur, a criminal unlike any they have encountered before, who revisits the scenes of his crimes and kills without hesitation. This revelation gives the sheriff an idea, prompting him to return to the scene of Llewellyn's death. As he looks at the door and notices the missing lock, he suspects that Anton may be inside. After searching the room and finding nothing, he sits on the bed and spots a coin on the floor next to a removed ventilation cover. The next morning, Sheriff Bell visits his brother, who lives in a rundown house and is confined to a wheelchair. They recall their shared past and the sheriff confides in his brother about his struggle to accept the ever-changing world and the chaos in their community. 
His brother reassures him that change is constant and inevitable, urging him to embrace what lies ahead. The scene shifts to Carla Jean at her mother's funeral. After the service, she returns to her mother's house and notices an open window. Realizing that Anton might be inside, she cautiously enters the room and finds Anton lurking in the shadows. Carla attempts to reason with Anton, insisting that he has no need to harm her. However, Anton coldly reveals that he made a promise to spare Llewellyn, but she declined. Carla pleads with him to reconsider, but Anton mocks her, saying he often hears similar pleas from his victims. He then presents a coin, challenging Carla to call it, but she refuses, asserting that the decision is his alone. Anton eventually leaves the house, pausing to check his shoes for bloodstains before driving off. Suddenly, his car is involved in a serious accident, totaling the vehicle. He emerges from the wreckage, injured, and pays two children to help him conceal his condition before leaving the scene on foot. His fate remains uncertain as he walks away with severe injuries. The focus then shifts to the sheriff at home, where it is revealed that he has retired. He discusses a dream with his wife, expressing his ongoing remorse over the challenges people face in trying to improve their lives while the world around them seems to deteriorate. Movie ends. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.